Good morning, Concordia. Don't know how to work this thing. Thanks, everyone, for coming out in this yucky weather, but we're thankful that we're getting rain, right? I've got many, many, many announcements, so bear with me. Um, we have quite a few that are out sick, um, so please be in prayer for all those who have the bug. Um, also, William was admitted last night with low blood pressure, and Dennis Carricker is having outpatient surgery uh, one day this week. So keep the, uh, those folks in your prayers. Um, thanks to all the visitors that are here today. We appreciate you coming to our Christmas play. There are pew registers on the um, end of the aisle, if you will please sign in. And if you're at a table, if you'll just pick one up um, from somewhere and sign in, we appreciate that. Um, if you want to go on the mission trip next Saturday, please contact Lisa Ziegert as soon as you can. They need to make plans if they're going to drive the bus or just drive uh, different cars. If you haven't already picked up your envelopes, there are some still left there in the back. Next Sunday will be Christmas caroling. The youth will leave at 3, I believe. And then there will be a meal for everyone um, at 6 p.m. And we will have a birthday party for baby Jesus. And if you can, please bring a donation for the U Unity Mobile Meal Mission. Tonight, if you're part of the choir, you get the night off. Eddie said, don't come out in the rain, just, just stay home. Um, and he would also like to thank everyone that participated in the music event last Sunday. It was a fabulous, fabulous event, and um, um, it's just, just great Christmas spirit. Um, if you were unable to be here, or if you would like to look at it again, you can do so on um, YouTube. Did I go out? I didn't do it. Anyway, you may view all of our services on YouTube, thanks to Mike Beaver. If you have our um, directory, our app on your phone, that is the easiest way to do it. If you don't know how, ask somebody. Um, it is a great, it's a great app. I use it like every day. I just want to call your attention to our songs during the uh, program today. They're on the yellow handout. So uh, congregation, please sing. I think that's it. Anything else? We pray for... Ooh, turn that down just a little. <laughs> we pray for a little better weather this afternoon because if you're involved in the Christmas Eve uh, program, uh, we are going to practice uh, tonight at 5 o'clock. So that's the Christmas Eve program. We, uh, and, and we had a great council meeting this morning. I uh, want to uh, announce that uh, Sherry Foster was reelected as vice president. And Jan Williams was uh, elected as secretary. And Lisa Ashley was reelected as our church treasurer. And we want to thank uh, Julie Courier for her service as our outgoing secretary. And uh, next Sunday, as we begin worship, we'll have a brief installation service of our newly elected church council members. So that'll be next Sunday. As, uh, as we prepare for this morning's service and the Christmas play, we thank the youth for being a part of that. And we want to uh, uh, share in this time with them together. But today as we gather, we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. And that Sunday is normally the Sunday uh, classified as love. And it's also called uh, Bethlehem Sunday, in which uh, our Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And so... During this season of Advent, we prepare for the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem because Jesus is 
our gift of love and God's gift of love to us. So that's, that's what we celebrate today as we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. We uh, now begin our worship as we stand. Are we going to have a prelude? Okay. I didn't see anybody sitting here, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> All right. Would you stand, please, for our confession and forgiveness? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make us ready for the, the way of your only begotten Son, but that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with, your, with pure minds through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, you in your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Be with us, Lord, for it is morning, and the day has just begun. Let your light scatter the darkness and illuminate your church. Joy is light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly and holy, blessed is Jesus Christ. We have come to this new day, and we look to you as the light of our lives. We sing to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Amen. Good morning, how are you guys? Good, okay. Have you ever wished upon a star? Yeah? Well, when my mom was a little girl, there was a rhyme she'd say in the evening as soon as it was, as soon as it was dark enough for her to see the fr very first scar star in the sky. She would say, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Have any of you guys heard that rhyme? Yeah. No? When she finished saying the rhyme, she closed her eyes and made a wish for something special. My mom never told me if any of her wishes ever came true. Have any of yours come true? Yeah? No? Well, I'm sure wishing on the star had nothing to do with it. The people who lived in Jesus' day were watching and waiting for the Messiah, who had been promised by the prophets of old. Many of them watched the stars in the sky looking for a sign that would announce the coming of the Messiah. As you know, a star did appear announcing the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, who followed the star to get to Jesus? There were three of them. They brought him gifts. That's right, the three wise men saw the star and went to find Jesus. One of the names given to Jesus is Bright Morning Star. Jesus is not a wishing star to whom we say a prayer and make a wish. He's a star of hope. Our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we see the many stars and the decorations of this season, may we be reminded that Jesus is the bright morning star, and that, and that when we put our hope and trust in him, our future is secure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats now. <coughs>
new star. You're looking nice and bright this evening. Thank you, old star. I've been working on my shininess. Good job. And this is a great night for all of us to look our best. Why is that? Because it's Christmas. Yay. Uh, what's Christmas? You don't know about Christmas? Oh, that's right. You're a brand new star. This is your very first Christmas. Yes, is it your very first Christmas too? Oh no, I've seen over 2,000 of them. Wow, 2,000, is that a lot? Well, yes, it is. In fact, I am old enough to tell you about the very first Christmas, and I can explain why we still celebrate it, even after all these years. Oh, please do, I wanna hear all about it. Okay, to start with, we have to go back before the first Christmas and visit a little place called Nazareth. Is Nazareth the place in the sky, you know, up in space? No, it's a place down on the Earth, on that little bitty planet right down there. Do you mean the one over there by Jupiter? No, it's a place, oh, no, the one further to the right. Do you mean Pluto? No. I didn't think it was still a planet. No, not Pluto, to the right, your other right. Do you mean the little blue and green one? They're between Mars and Venus? Exactly. And look, right over there, that is the town of Nazareth. Oh, who's the pretty lady? That's Mary. She is a virgin, and she is pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Joseph is a carpenter. He is also a righteous man. What is he doing? He's building something. Carpenters are always building something. Hope it's a cradle. I think you're getting ahead of our story. Who's that other guy? He's all shiny like us. That's Gabriel. He's an angel. He has come to talk to Mary. Let's listen. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was set to be barren, but now is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. What did all that mean? The angel told Mary that she's going to have a baby who will be the son of God. And what did Mary say? She said yes. Oh, good. Now what? I like Mary. She seems really nice. Oh, she is. After the angel left her, Mary hurried to visit her co cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Mary. When Mary arrived, she found out that things were just like the angel had told her. Mary seemed really happy to see Elizabeth. And just think, Elizabeth was going to have a baby in her old age. It was a miracle. Yes, and Mary wasn't the only one who was happy. Elizabeth was happy too. Listen to what she said to Mary. Blessed are you among women, and blessed the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For, all, for now all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things to me. Holy is his name. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for a long visit, and then returned home to Nazareth. But by now, it was more obvious that she was going to have a baby. Uh-oh. What did Joseph say? Well, Joseph knew the baby wasn't his. But, since Joseph was a righteous man, he decided to put Mary away privately. But, after he had considered these things, God sent an angel to speak to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this was done in fulfillment of the ancient prophecy. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. 
Oh, and the name Emmanuel means God with us. Wow, that's a great name. And what did Joseph do when he woke up? He did just what the angel had told him to do. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save your sons and daughters? Did you know? your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you had to be counted. Why would he do that? Something about taxes, whatever those are. But in order to be counted, everyone had to go back to their family's hometown. Sort of like a family reunion? A little bit, but without the games or the potato salad. <laughs> That's too bad. I love potato salad. Did they have cookies? I love cookies too. I don't think so then it really wasn't much like a family reunion at all. <laughs> no. In fact, for Mary and Joseph, it was a pretty long and difficult trip, especially since Mary was expecting a baby. Where did they have to go? They went to a little town called Bethlehem. Do you mean... Do you mean that little bitty town in the middle of nowhere? That's the one. It was the birthplace of Joseph's ancestor, King David. Wait a minute, Bethlehem, isn't that the one they sang about? The one they called Old Little Town of Bethlehem? Yes. I 
I really like that song. They even sang How the Silent Stars Go By. Listen, I think someone's going to sing it now. Christmas. When do we get to the part with the tree and the star? Well, there was no tree on the first Christmas, but there was a star. Where? We're getting there. First, we have to hear more about Mary and Joseph. Okay. So Joseph went to Bethlehem to be counted, and Mary went with him. Look, Mary and Joseph have to ride to Bethlehem. I hope they found somewhere nice to stay. You're right. But there was no room for them in the inn, so Mary and Joseph stayed in a stable. A stable? Do you mean for like cows and horses and goats and sheep yep. and... Mary and Joseph stayed in a humble stable. There, Mary had her baby, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger. Why didn't they put the baby in the manger? It was probably the safest and best place they had for him. I'm sure that Joseph lined it with fresh, new hay and stood watch over Mary and the baby during the night. What did they name the baby? They named him Jesus, which means the Lord saves. And now, for the first time up in the sky, there was a new star announcing the birth of the Messiah. Look, I think they're gonna sing again. They do that a lot at Christmas time. You get used to it. <laughs>
Wow, that was a really great song. Just think, a new star in the sky, how wonderful, how glorious. No one on earth could have missed that. It's amazing that not only did people miss the Messiah then, but that they still miss him today. But God didn't rely on a single new star to announce the birth of his son. He also sent an angel to tell a group of shepherds all about it. Of course, it really frightened the shepherds to suddenly see an angel. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Love incarnate, love divine, star and angels gave the sign, bow to babe on bended knee, the Savior of humanity, unto us a child is born, he shall reign left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told.
So that's the story of the first Christmas and the star? Yes, but there's more to the story. Look, over there in the east. Who are those guys? They are the three wise men. We three kings of Orion are bearing gifts we traverse so far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, falling yonder star. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what are they saying? It's from an old song about the three wise men. They are saying that there are three kings from the east and that they've traveled a long way to get here. Oh, I get it, and they saw a new star and they followed it because they were wise enough to know that the Savior has been born. That's right. Listen, I think they're going to sing about it. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star baby Jesus. They are gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold because Jesus is the king, frankincense because he is the high priest, and myrrh because of his sacrifice. Hey, fella. hey fellas, where are they going? Bethlehem's over there. Hey fellas, you're going the wrong way. Bethlehem, the baby's over there. They're going to Jerusalem, to the palace to look for the king of the Jews. But why? The baby's born in Bethlehem, over there. He was born in a stable. They went, well unfortunately, they met with an evil name named Herod, who was the local ruler. In Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. When you find him, bring him to me so I can worship him too. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard all of this, he was greatly distressed, and all of Jerusalem with him. He called in the Jewish priests and the teachers of the law and asked them where the Messiah was to be born. So the wise men went on their way, and the star had seen them in the east, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw ahead of them the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they gave him their gifts and went back to their own countries. But having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they went home a different way. Why didn't they go back to see Herod? Because Herod didn't really want to worship Jesus. He wanted to destroy him. That's horrible. Yes, it was. What happened to the baby Jesus? An angel was sent to warn Joseph in a dream to take his family away to Egypt, where they would be safe. They escaped into the night before Herod found them. That's wonderful. Is that the whole story? There is a little more. When it was safe to return, the child Jesus and his family traveled back to Nazareth where he was raised. Jesus was the son of God and he did all of the things that were prophesied about him. He lived a perfect life and died on a cross for all sin and rose again to live forever. Now he sits at the right hand of the God the Father and one day he will come to judge the world. That's amazing. And how do you know all this? Oh, I saw it all from up here in the sky. For you see, I am the new star that appeared that night. 
Really? You are the new star? But you're so old. So is the story. Over 2,000 years old. But it's still as true today as it was on that very first Christmas. And that's why we still celebrate Christmas today. That's amazing. Thank you for telling me the story. I think I'll shine a little brighter now I know all this. Look, it's time for another song. And cookies? I love cookies. Yes, yes. We'll get you some cookies. Come on. Turn your mic off. In this holy season of prayer and song and laughter, we praise you for the great wonders you have sent us, for the shining star and the angel's song, for the infant's cry in the lonely manger. Thank you for the blessings of the Advent light. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lisa, we want you to come up on the stage. We are just so grateful for all that you've done for us in the past year that you've been here. Um, and we want to give you a gift. Thank you. We love you so much, Miss Lisa. Thank you. I love all of y'all too. Thank you. They did a great job, didn't they? Maybe not. There it goes. There's a little lag time. 
You see the list of our performers in the New Star play, and uh, I think it's, it's great to recognize them. Uh, our new star was Sarah Fisher, our old star. I, I'm going to say older star, not old star, but the, our older star is Sarah Fisher. And the new star is Anna Marie Overcash. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Our twinkly stars were Olivia Lanning. Yep, raise your hand so, so people can see you. And then there's, uh, is that Corey? Corey Torres? Coralie. Coralie. And uh, Kathleen Yost. And then we had a, a surprise one before we went to press. Uh, yeah. Anna Lee. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's right. And then as Mary, it was Hope Boston. Hope. And then we had James Ritchie as Joseph. <laughs> Elizabeth was Hannah Sampler. Uh, oh, there's Anna. You're playing dual roles there. Yeah. And then we had Gabriel as uh, uh, Sawyer Wells, Sawyer. And then uh, we had our angel choir, had Aggie, Abby Fagger, Audrey Fagger, Lily Manning, Hannah Stampler, and Claire Wells. Yeah, that, y'all did great, yeah. Then our shepherds, uh, we had shepherds and, and, and they were now they're dressed as kings. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. That's right. Because we had Hope Fagger, we had Gabe Holzhauser, and Marilyn Overcash. And then we had the three wise men and women. Uh, we, had, we had Hope, Hope Fagger and Lily Manning and Marilyn Overcash. So they played dual roles there. And Herod was Gabe Overcash. So he had a dual role. Holzhauser, that's right. I can't focus on the paper here. Uh, the scribe was Coralie Torres. Yeah, you had dual roles as well. Uh, and of course, we want to thank all of them and, the, and Lisa for directing it and Sarah Brandt and Sarah Wells, uh, our student director was, uh, was uh, Marilyn Overcash. And we had some backstage uh, help. We had Grace Boston. We had uh, Sarah Brandt and Sarah Wells backstage. And the sound and lights, uh, Chip Brandt. And then Lisa provided our music accompaniment. So we're, we're very thankful to have all of you sharing the new star Christmas play with us today. Okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> I do not need a microphone, obviously. Uh, I would like to thank our wonderful parents. I think it may have even been Jason Fisher's idea for these beautiful stars. Is that right? You helped find them. And uh, I think they're a lovely addition. I think you'll be able to use them for years to come. Aren't they beautiful? They are. They are. Thank you. <laughs> we will uh, receive our offering at this time.
joyful and adore him. Yeah, yeah. The I forgot to mention uh, two people that uh, were very instrumental in our worship today. Uh, Hope Faggart for our prelude and Grace Boston for our, being our viol violinist. I guess that's how you pronounce it, but beautiful music. Thank you very much. Let's, yes. Yeah, very... Let's uh, have our offering prayer and the Lord's prayer. God of faithfulness, we bring before you the precious gifts of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for those in need and prepare for your son's advent coming into our hearts. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending hymn. Following our benediction, we'll have a special announcement. In difficult times, let us keep watch. The living Christ is on the way. Now is the time for hope. Let us rejoice. The loving Christ is on the way. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit increase your hope, strengthen your faith, and deepen your love and grant you peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank, thank everyone uh, for participating in this play, all the hard work that's gone into it. Um, let's just have a show of hands if you helped in some way. I know there was more than what was up here. Raise your hand. Come on now, parents. All those backstage people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 
Our, our children's Christmas play is always such a great gift. It's just a special time of year, and I'm so glad that we were able to do this again this year. And as Advent is leading up to Christmas, we look back on the foretelling of Jesus coming. May we also look back on the time that Lisa Ziegert has been our youth and family director and thank her for sharing her love of Jesus with us. Let's give her a applause. We have a special gift of hand prints and thumb prints for her. If we managed to make that a secret, then we did good. We did good. <laughs> we worked hard on that. There's also some beautiful yellow roses on the table for you. We would like for you and your family to go first, of course, for refreshments. Um, also, please, everyone, enjoy refreshments after their family gets through the line. We have a basket for cards, so if you haven't already given her a card, there's, there's a place up there at the, at the window. And um, we're just so blessed that we have had Lisa here during this time. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And um, this was just a great day. Thank you, Lisa. She said, uh uh. <laughs> Stay for refreshments, please. Very sweet.